This was um, a phenomenal exchange between Max Blumenthal, the Gray Zone's Max Blumenthal, and State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller. He was taking questions from the press, and uh, unfortunately for him, you know, a real journalist actually showed up this morning. And so here's Max Blumenthal uh, confronting Matthew Miller. Go ahead. In, in March, you uh, condemned Israel's finance minister, Bezalel Smotrich, for calling for wiping the Palestinian village of Huara off the map. Uh, this week, we've heard the defense minister of Israel, Yoav Gallant, declare that he's fighting human animals in Gaza as Israel cuts off the gas, the water, and the electricity. We've heard Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister, declare uh, that all hiding places will be turned to rubble in a besieged coastal enclave where there are one million children. We've heard Ariel Kalner, who is a member of Knesset from the ruling Likud party, call for a Nakba 2.0, which is essentially a call for genocide and the ethnic cleansing of Palestinians as 850 are dead in Gaza. So what do you think so of that rhetoric let, in light of your let, previous let, condemnation? Let me say a few things about that. Number one, um, we expect as we said, that Israel will conduct its operations in, in accordance with international law. Number two. Stop. Let me play this again. Um, we expect, as we said, that Israel will conduct its operations in, in accordance with international law. We expect <laughs> that, in that Israel. Well, that'll, that'll be a first. I mean, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? The ignorance that these people just rely upon to say these things is astounding. They say this because they know that they are speaking to a brainwashed country that is completely ignorant of the way Israel conducts its business. We expect... World's most moral army. Yeah, world's most moral army. We expect that they will conduct this operation in accordance with international law. Fucking unbelievable liar you just go up there and fucking lie like that with a clear conscience like this is just unbelievable it's really unbelievable and you know you you look at a thing like this you look at the media coverage you look at the way the politicians talk about this democrats republicans you know this is something that we don't really talk about very much on this show uh we tend to not dabble in identity politics and things like that but this is just abject racism it really is that's what this is and you get a sense when you see people talk like this you know i'm not gonna ever know what it's like to be a racial minority in my home country and have to experience life in that way and have to look through the lens of a racial minority at a society that is just not concerned with understanding who i am or giving a fuck about who i am or what my concerns are for seeing things from my point of view. That's what this feels like here. It feels like you're talking to people, whether it's, you know, masters of war like this guy, or just, you know, man on the street Democrats, man on the street Republicans or media people. You're talking to people who seem completely ignorant and completely uninterested in learning anything about this. It's like you're 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 dealing with a, a a mass of people who just doesn't give a shit about this issue. They don't care enough to learn about it. They don't care enough to know anything about it. And that's because the people being victimized here are these people who the Israeli defense minister just said are human animals. And that's what this is. This is just absolute bigotry. And you see how powerful and how prevalent that actually is. You see how, how racism still is so alive and fucking well, because that's what this is. That, that's why you cannot break through here. That's why you cannot break through here, because there is broad-based, bipartisan racism towards these people. It's just fucking obscene. Yeah. Uh, well, it, it goes back to, uh, to the famous uh, Ukraine moment. There, they. This is amazing to see this happening with people who look like us. Look, you could never do to white people what they've done to the people in Yemen. There, it, the the you 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 couldn't even begin to do that <laughs> to white people. Um, so yeah, I mean there there's an element of that. I think for people playing these international geopolitical games. 
it, it really comes down to who has money and power. It, it file this under uh, the worst person you know made a great point. Um, Andrew Tate just had a little snippet that went kind of viral where he said, there, it, I don't know if this is entirely true, but I think there's some truth to it. He said, there, there's no racism for rich people. If, if you're rich Asian or rich Arab or rich white, nobody cares. You're rich. That's for the poor. Racism is for the poor. That, that, that's how they keep you divided and they keep you from going after what they have amongst themselves. They don't care. They're not walking around. It's about how much money you have. So, uh, if the Palestinians were a strong and wealthy people, they'd get treated very differently. Right. I mean, there is that. El I, I mean, I think there is a racial element, but there's that element as well. well but that element, the, the reason they're not a strong and wealthy people is because they happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time when a bunch of Eastern Europeans wanted their, uh, you know, supposed land back. Sure. Right. But we'll kiss the Saudis ass. All well, the Saudis, that, right, that's exactly. that's the point I'm making. But in this case, it's absolutely a sense that has set in over the past, you know, 75 years at least, um, that these people just do not count because of who they are. Absolutely. Well, yeah. and because Israel is our proxy in the region. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. All right. We keep going here because don't forget, he has a few things he wants to say about this. He's not done. He's not done. So, so far, he opens with, well, we expect they're going to do this in accordance with international law, like sending 300,000 troops into an open-air prison with no electricity. Let's, let's hear him go on. He's not done. And neither is Max, thankfully. Number two, there are going to be a number of statements made uh, over the course of this conflict. And when we have disagreements with them, we will um, make those known privately. Oh, you're going to make those known privately. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. We're gonna, okay, so we're going to gonna, wall, we're gonna have a sit down. Yeah, wall to wall coverage about how you know we all have to pray for Israel, unite behind Israel, stand with Israel, condemn the attacks. Wall to wall, we'll make that as public as fucking possible. But when they start killing women and children, we're going to keep it behind closed doors because that's the polite thing to do. Do you see how fucking just evil? This is. And do you see how nobody in a position to do fuck all about it is going to? Well, when you when you subject yourself to this kind of media and these kinds of narratives, um, it conditions you to accept all this as the reasonable point of view. Right. Of course, with our allies, we well, of, of course, the United States, if Israel gets out of line, we'll settle it in a civilized way and we'll call them and they'll stop. I mean, this is, this is what the brain dead viewers of this kind of media take in. And that's why having somebody like Max in that room is so novel because the, the press core normally that would get that kind of access have, you know, been chosen for their willingness not to challenge the, the madness of what he's saying. I, I honestly I don't know how Max keeps getting into these kinds of spaces. He did he got into that mad out thing. I don't know how they don't see gray zone and say rejected. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank God, thank God he got. I mean, do you have to? You understand how sick you have to be to actually absorb yeah. what this guy is saying and say, yeah, that makes sense. We're going to address it privately. We expect them not to commit war crimes. We expect them to comply with international law. Bullshit. But mm -hmm. when they do commit war crimes, we're going to address it behind closed doors. We're not going to make well, a big well, public because, thing about it. Well, because for pe for people who, who follow this shit, they just need you to give them a justification for investing in these institutions. Like it, they're not going to dig any deeper than what you say. So you just got to give them the words, right? Yep. No, no, I was, I was listening. And he said, if Israel crossed the line, they're, they're going to pick up the phone. They're going to give him a call. They're going to give him a call. No, no, they're not just going to let him run willy nilly over the, over <laughs> the Palestinians. No, no, right. no, we don't, we, this is America. We don't do that. We don't do that. Right. Exactly. All right. So he said he had a few things, not a couple of things. He's got more. Number three, though, so let me just let me just let me just speak to this. Number three, some of the questions I'm getting today do seem to ignore the fact 
that Israel just had hundreds of its citizens killed, people who were taken hostage, and pretend that Israel shouldn't be able to conduct any well, kind of. Uh, let me just say, because shouldn't, to, can you, can, shouldn't, you just have, shouldn't. Let me just let me just let me. Palestinian children let me, have been killed. Do you let acknowledge me, that? Will you even me, acknowledge that? Let me finish. Eighty Palestinian children uh, you, killed this week. You know what? Week? Uh, again, babies. Let me, do you, you acknowledge a, that? You asked. You asked a question. I will answer the question. Okay, that's my then, question. So I, I'm going to start by answering the previous question that was interrupted. I will say some of the questions seem to pretend that Israel should not be able to conduct operations to defend itself and hold accountable the terrorists who killed civilians. Okay, first of all, all, all of the coverage that we've seen has ignored the fact that what happens, and it was horrible what happens, I do not condone what happens, I, I do not celebrate or glorify in any way the death of civilians, right? It's a horrible thing. It's a downward spiral. This is only going to get worse. I agree with all of that. Okay. But all of the coverage ignored that what happened before that is pretty much a less exaggerated version of what's going to happen after it. Right. 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 I mean, now right. it's forget it. Now I don't think there's going to be a Gaza much longer. But if you look at the map that Ryan Knight shared and several other people shared, What's been happening for the past several decades is a systematic genocide of the Palestinian people. And right. none of any of the coverage that we've seen has acknowledged that. So he's saying, well, I don't see questions. There are some people asking questions in here as if Israel wasn't just attacked. Everybody's acting as if the people of Gaza have not been under constant attack. Well, that was uh, there was that clip from the BBC. Are we playing that? We're not doing that one, right? Don't have um, that one. Maybe it, we'll have it was that one Friday. The, it, it was the pa the 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 uh, Palestinian diplomat, I think, and uh, he was on the BBC, and he said, uh, you know, because they asked him. Oh about yeah, we're definitely the, doing that Friday. Yes, definitely. They asked him yeah. about the atrocities, and he said, "Well, why don't you ever ask ask about uh, the the atrocities that they commit? Because what just happened? That this happens on a daily basis to." the people in Gaza, but you never ask about that. And you don't ask the Israelis to justify themselves when they do those things. You only ask us to justify ourselves when these exactly. things happen. Exactly. Exactly right. Exactly right. And um, the other point that he makes here about how Israel has has a right to, to do their operation, we're not saying, like, they, they're going to do an operation, as if Gaza is not an operation. Gaza is one big Israeli operation. There's right. been an Israeli operation going on for decades. That is not Israel's policy. That is not our policy. It is something that we would ve vehemently disagree with. Israel has the right to secure its country the way any country does. It has the right to defend itself against terrorism. It has the right to hold terrorists accountable. Uh, and I will say, uh, ultimately, the, the Hamas terrorists who launch these operations, there is no one who has more disregard for Palestinian civilian life than those terrorists. Because those terrorists, let me finish, let me finish. Play, those play, terrorists play, play. launched this activity. Those terrorists, I, I, again, we have a lot of new, we seem to have a lot of new people. Those terrorists launched this A lot of new people here today. A lot of journalists here today. I don't know what's going on. I don't know how all these journalists got into the building. Usually I come out here and it's a bunch of fucking college boys and you know from from fucking just, georgetown who just my copying for what i say access. right exactly i don't know where all these journalists got in here a lot of new people in here today who actually give a shit about that'll what the, they're talking that, about and that'll be the last time yeah yeah activity knowing that there would be retaliation knowing that israel would have to defend itself as any country would d did knowing that it would lead to the unfortunate loss of civilian yeah, lives by their pal palestinians, by palestinians and they did anyway prisons. let me go go ahead um, That's amazing. So, so baby killing is okay here. Why can't you acknowledge that? We always mourn the loss of civilian life. It is, an un, it, it is an unfortunate circumstance every time it happens. And as I just said, the, the I, I Hamas can't. terrorists who launched this terrorist attack. I, I'm sorry. I know we're not supposed to keep. I, I can't. Wait. Oh, it's an unfortunate circumstance when a Palestinian baby is killed. It's terrorism when an Israeli baby is killed. Well, do you see what the, the, the I mean, do people not understand what they're seeing here? Has, well, because, has you know, I feel well, like because, Walter Sobchak in the Big Lebowski, the whole world gone crazy. <laughs> you know, they frame it as the Israelis are only responding to provocation, 
right? Their 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 actions are defensive, whereas the Palestinian actions are aggressive. I mean, that's obviously right, which that's, is obviously you 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 have to be completely ignorant of what's going on there, which most people are. Which, they as took you their say, land, they put as them you in say, a that's pen, what, and they started killing them all. Right, right, yeah. and and like we showed on the Patreon show, I mean, literally, you got people there getting kicked out of their house and settlers moving into their house. Yeah, literally, and most Americans that because they don't see that, and the the clip we showed, I was that really shows you how. The tide is turning like now this had that clip and now this is very milk toast. Yeah, yeah. That, is, that is not the gray zone. So when I didn't know they were still around <laughs> when they're I, I knew they were around uh, when they're showing things like that. I mean, that's that says a lot about about how they're losing control of the narrative like this kind of shit. If there's a bright side here, most people aren't buying this anymore. They used to. They used to, but they don't anymore. I don't, not most people. I certainly hope you're right about that. I hope you're right about that. And we'll show some of these clips on Friday, um, you know, Friday morning. Uh, that BBC clip that you're talking about, there's a lot of stuff. If there is a show Friday morning, folks, they gave JB a warning for talking, you know, about this. They demonetized the channel. This is why I'm saying if you're not on our sub stack, even if it's for free, and if you're not subscribed to our Rumble channel, I don't know what you're doing because... We are in a, an emergency situation here where if you think the censorship around Ukraine is bad, this shit starts getting worse as it's going to, you ain't seen nothing yet. We are yeah. dealing with an out-of-control government, an out-of-control network of very rich people with a lot of power and no conscience whatsoever. If they are taking their orders from this guy, they can disappear, all of us, like that. So if you're not on our Substack, you need to get on our fucking Substack. It's free, okay? It's fucking free. This is going to start getting worse. What did Tucker Carlson say a couple weeks ago? He says, oh, you think it's going to be a nice little election, Biden and Trump, and maybe one of them will win. No, 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 no. You see what's going on now? Now they have World War III brewing on two burners. It's now cooking on yep. two burners. They just turned another burner on. They had Ukraine. The money stalled out for Ukraine. They had a little hiccup getting that going, right? Now they got the other burner. Now they got Iran. Right, mm -hmm. Russia's other ally. You think these are these are joke times? These are not joke times. Okay. No. Uh, so you no, know, no, buckle no, up. no. Listen, I was not kidding when I said I took these trips back to back within a year. I took these bucket list trips because I'm not confident we're gonna live in a world where you can do what I just did for very right. much longer. That is exactly. why. That is why I did it in such a compressed time and didn't just say well i just did this i'll wait on this i'm i'm not confident that a year from now you can do what i just did not if this guy has his way exactly knowing exactly. that it would produce the loss of of not just direct israeli lives who they took in their incursions across the border but also the loss of palestinian civilian life um uh, uh they they ultimately bear the responsibility for those acts. Go ahead. Go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go go I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to ask I'm going to I I I just I just did do that. I'm going to I'm going to ask I'm going to I am going to I would ask you not to talk over your colleague. Go ahead. <laughs> Will you call on Israel not to yes, kill yeah, civilians? Yes, great. I will ask you not to. I'll ask you not to talk over your colleague. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. God bless Max Blumenthal for getting in there. I mean, it's just incredible. Just really, I, I, I'm honestly surprised that they let the great. I mean, I guess they must have to. I don't know what their rules are around press access. I mean, obviously he has a press pass, um, but do they just let in anyone with a press pass? I, I'm just, I, I'm always surprised that they let Max into these rooms. Please clap.